Hey guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint tiger fur again. I posted a time-lapse version of this a couple of days ago, but I've decided to give you the full version for free on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how I paint tiger fur from the materials that I use, so the paints, the brushes, the techniques I use, and I'm going to do it all in real time, or most of it in real time anyway. All I ask is that you watch the video and comment below if you found it helpful. It really does mean a lot to us. I would also love to see your work that you create based off the information that we give you, so please make sure on Instagram to tag your work with hashtag Studio Wildlife so that we can check it out. I have recently just purchased some better lighting equipment, so hopefully I can do some better and longer videos in this style for you guys. Let me know what you think about that. As always, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, so hit that button down there. Anyway, let's get started. I'll show you how I paint tiger fur in real time. So I'll start by showing you what brushes I'm going to use, and I'm just going to use five simple brushes. Um, in fact, I'm only going to use four brushes to make it even simpler. So you don't have to use these brushes, but these are some of the brushes that I like to use. And you can find more info about each of these brushes on a blog page on studiowildlife.com. I'll pop a link down to that in the description below. But the first brush I'm going to use is this one inch flat brush. And I'm just going to use this for blocking in all my shapes and colours. The next one is this number eight round brush okay so you can see that there and i'm just going to use this for the main drawing in of the stripes next up is a liner brush okay and i'm just going to use this for some of the longer strands of fur and blocking in the fur detail and then finally i have a small detail brush that i'll do for the smallest details to start this one off, I'm actually going to start by prepping it because I'm working on paper, uh, just a watercolour block. I think it's a Dale and Rowney watercolour block. Um, I'm just going to prep it with a bit of gesso. I usually prep my canvases and I usually prep my paper with gesso first and then sand it down just because I like working on a smooth surface. I find that smoother surface helps a little bit for the detail. Like Your brushes don't get caught in the texture and grain of the canvas. But you don't have to do that. I can work well enough with and get enough detail using pre-bought canvases or pre-bought paper. It's just a personal preference, really. Plus, this gesso layer will help to just soak that paint up so it doesn't damage the paper. Um, but this is pretty strong paper anyway, so I doubt it would get damaged by the paint. So I'm just going to pop a layer of white gesso over the canvas, or over the paper, okay. and then I will just let it dry. So as I said, I just do this on the paper, just to give it that little bit of extra protection from the paint that I will be putting on. Because I use a lot of water when I'm doing my fur, because I like to work in thin layers, it's nice just to have that little bit of paint down to act as a protection for the paper so it doesn't buckle or stretch. But again, the block that I'm using, uh, it's quite a strong, good paper, so I wouldn't really need to do this step for the paper that I'm using. But I'm not gonna do it all over, uh, because I'm not gonna paint all the way to the edges, as I'm just doing it as a sort of little sketch to show you how I paint fur. Okay, I think we'll let that dry now, and I'll see you in a minute. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'll show you the paints that I'm using. Um, I like using the Senelier or Senelia, I don't know how you pronounce it, but abstract range of paints. So that's these here. They come in these little pouches and I find they're just brilliant for storage and they are quite good quality paints as well. Or they're decent quality enough for what I use them for anyway. And the colours that I'm using are Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, Raw Sienna, a great colour, I really recommend it for wildlife art. Yellow Ochre, but this is just a Dalla Rowney graduate acrylic. This was what I just had to hand. I'm not really too picky about my paints. 
I've got Ultramarine Blue, and I know you're thinking, Tiger, why would I ever need blue? But I'll show you why we need it later on. And then a big white. I have a big white and a big black, because they are the colours that I use most often, and I use in all of my paintings. And then finally, I have this Burnt Sienna. Now, but this Burnt Sienna is from the Dalaroni System 3 range, and I do prefer this Burnt Sienna to the graduate range and the abstract range just because I think this Burnt Sienna is a little bit more orange than the other two ranges and I like that for my tigers, it's a perfect tiger. The abstract Burnt Sienna is a little bit redder and the graduate one is also a little bit towards that brown range whereas this is just a nice orangey brown colour, perfect for painting tigers. I would recommend, if you're into painting wildlife, that these are some bog standard colours that you should always pick up. You can mix pretty much any colour using these. The only other things that I would add are maybe a cadmium red and a brighter yellow, so like a pale yellow or a lemon yellow, something like that. So I'm just going to sketch out what I'm going to draw. Um, it's from my own reference photo so I will actually share my reference photo with you guys I'll pop it up on the screen now I'll make it full screen so that if you want to you can screenshot it and then use it for your own paintings to follow along and um, I've chosen this reference photo because it's got a nice combination of clumped fur together some straight fur and there's a nice transition between some of the orange and some of the whiter fur on a tiger uh, anyway I will draw it out and then we can get started. Okay, so now you can see my drawing. It doesn't look like much now, and I have just taken sort of a small section of the actual picture that I was using as a reference, and I've gone a little bit off piste a little bit because I'm just trying to sketch it out. I'm not really focused too much on the detail for this piece. So to start off, what I usually do is give it a little wash and for this I am giving it a little wash in the Burnt Sienna, that nice orangey colour. So I'm just using that one inch brush and I am just giving it a little wash. I am not bothered about it being perfect, I'm not even bothered about losing some of my drawing because I'm just going to paint over the top of it anyway. Next. I am going to start to draw in some of the darker stripes. You notice I didn't include black in my palette. Usually I would use black straight out of the tube just because I can then freshen that up with colours and glazing. But for you guys, it's probably better to learn to mix your own blacks. So I like mixing a little bit of burnt umber with some blue. So I've mixed my colours together. Sorry, that is my water pot. Just need to move my water pot out of the way. So I've mixed my colours together and all I'm going to do is just block in following the rough guide. And you can see that looks black and that is just a mix of the blue and the burnt umber. I'm just blocking in where I want some of those colours. I'm not too bothered about details. And just blocking it in so it's there as a reference for me later. Probably should have mixed a little bit more paint. That is one of the big tips that I'm still not very good at, is make sure you use enough paint. Make sure you mix enough paint. I only use paint in small amounts and I never have enough. I always have to mix it as I go, which is a little bit annoying for me really because I can never get the colours right because I am absolutely rubbish at mixing the correct colours. So now I'm going to have to mix some more. Right, so you see, now it's a little bit browner. I'm going to try and knock that out with a little bit of the blue. Try and match it as closely as possible. And then block in the rest. I'm going to try and put it down a little bit thicker now. So I've got a little bit of a thicker layer of paint going on. Uh, this is mostly because I'm just using paper. If I was doing it on canvas, it would be going down a little bit smoother than this. So I'm not too bothered about the actual shape, I actually want some of that dark still showing through. Blocking in where I want them to be, they don't need to be refined at all. Blocking in those areas of black or darks. Because as I said, this isn't a pure black. This is a natural black like you'd see more closely in nature, because you don't tend to see 
black straight out of the tube in nature it's usually a mix of loads of different colours just getting this locked in going over the bits that I've already done just making sure there's enough paint down adding these little bits again this isn't going to be a fully formed painting it's just going to be showing you how I paint my fur and so you see we're starting to get some little stripes just put in some little darker bits for where I want some darker areas of fur we are well we will be pretty much done with this step okay there's that step done Next, what I would usually do is block in a really dark brown because I want the dark brown fur next. So all I'm going to do is add a little bit more of the burnt umber to my mix and make a darker brown. Okay? And that's just going to go everywhere where I want the dark fur or even where I want the light orange fur to be. So I'm just blocking in these darker colours. Not bothering too much again about getting it perfect, just trying to block it in so I've got some paint down on the canvas. Now you can see here, even though it's a very good watercolour paper and a very strong watercolour paper, it is starting to buckle. So I do recommend using canvas if you are painting quite thick paints or doing things like this. Building up that colour. Building up a layer of paint. Once I've got this first layer of paint down, I'm hoping that the canvas or the paper won't buckle as much. And it'll be a bit easier and nicer to paint on. Again, I'm not going to cover the whole canvas. Just little bits that I'm going to paint. Because again, just showing you how I paint. For, for this step, I'm just using that number eight round brush. Just gradually adding more of the burnt umber, just covering my canvas with paint. As we start to get to the whiter fur underneath, I'm going to add a bit of yellow to my mix and a tiny little bit of blue. Again, I want this quite dark, so I'm going for sort of a yellowy grey colour down where I want the whiter fur because I'm actually going to build up lighter colours on the top. So here where this yellowy brown colour is going down, this is where my whiter fur will be. Okay, so we're getting there with this a little bit. Let's just fill in some of this down here and I've missed a bit of brown so again just grab my brown blush it all over that canvas splosh splodge splash do whatever you want be as thick or as thin as you like For more detail I would recommend using thinner strokes but some people like thicker more impasto looking paintings so it's completely up to you it's your preference do what makes you feel happy. And there's the next step done. Next, I start thinking about refining my drawing a little bit more. So again, mixing some of that black paint. I just want to start refining those stripes a little bit more. So for this, I use slightly more watered down paint and a little bit more control. So I think about where I want my brush strokes to go. So I'm now thinking about looking at where that fur is flowing around the body. I'm not being massively detailed, because again, I'm using the big, thick brush, but I'm just thinking about the direction of the fur, and which way it's going. It doesn't really matter at this stage, because we are actually gonna paint over some bits of this black again, but it helps just to have this foundation for later on in the painting. So I'm just looking at where those little bits of black fur flick out to give an indication of which direction it's going in. Just going lightly with that round brush, sometimes pressing on a little bit harder just to get a little bit more variation in my strokes. Sometimes I use a very old frayed version of this round brush. I do actually prefer that for bigger paintings just because it adds a little bit more interest to the painting. But this smooth one, because I'm doing quite a small section, 
it just gives me a little bit more control of what I'm doing. I'm just blocking in where I want those stripes to be. Again, this will end up getting painted over and refined later on in the stage. So next up, we want to start blocking in some of the direction of that orange fur. So for this, I want to go a little bit lighter and a little bit more orange. So I take some of my burnt umber, a little bit of my burnt sienna, and mix it with a little bit of my raw sienna. And we get a quite dark, yellowy, orangey brown. And all I'm doing for this is just very briefly blocking in some areas of fur thinking about which direction I want it to go in. Then for the whiter fur underneath, I add a bit of yellow, a bit of blue to that, to grey it off a little bit, and then a touch of white paint. Then I start thinking about the shapes, where I want my white fur to be, and the direction that that white fur is going in. It doesn't matter if you go over some of your black stripes here. They were just there to guide you. We will paint over them, we will paint them back in later on. Next, I get a little bit of a brighter orange. So I mix in some burnt sienna and some raw sienna. And I miss out the burnt umber. So this is where I start to think about my shapes a little bit more. Start to think about the direction that I want that fur to be going in. You could even add a touch of white to this, just so it really pops. It doesn't matter about getting everything perfect at this stage. All we're doing is blocking in bits of fur, clumps of fur, just so that we've got an idea later on when we're refining our drawing or refining our painting. So we're starting to build up some layers in our fur. And I like to paint in lots and lots of layers. I find that painting in layers actually brings a lot of depth to the painting and acrylics works brilliantly for this. You could actually apply the same principles with oil paints. You would just have to wait a little bit longer for the layers to dry. I'm going to get a little bit of an bluey grey coming in. Just thinking about the direction of that fur, which way that I want it to be, and where I want some of those clumps to be. I'm not actually following my reference photo very closely now. I would do if I was painting a proper picture. I'd be looking at where all of the fur actually folds and looking at the proper direction of each individual strand of fur to make sure that my clumps are going in the right way. But for this, just because it's showing you how to paint generic fur, I'm just having a bit of fun with it and just playing around. Next, I think I'm going to bring out the detail brush a little bit more. Usually when I'm painting my big paintings, I would actually use a couple more brushes than this. But I'm just going to do it with the basic material just so that you can see that you can do it at home as well. So next one, I'm bringing in a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of burnt sienna along with a little bit more white. And I'm going to start to block in some of the detailed fur. Just so I've got an idea. Again, I'm not thinking 
too much ahead. I'm just sort of blocking in some smaller little strands. Probably will end up painting over this again. Usually I'd use a slightly bigger brush than this just so that I'm not focusing too much on the details just yet. But because of the size of picture that I'm doing here, I've just decided to bring in this brush, but I'm just using it a little bit rougher than I usually would. See, I'm just really focusing on shapes rather than blocking in individual tiny hairs just yet. Just trying to get in a little more depth to my fur. Next, I'll do the same thing, but with a slightly lighter shade of orange. So I usually make it a little bit lighter, adding a little bit of yellow ochre, followed by a little bit of white. Okay, I want these lighter strands to appear more yellow than orange, so I just add bits of white and yellow to them until I'm happy with the colour that I get. Again, at this stage, colour doesn't really matter too much because I colour correct using some glazing techniques, which I'll show you later. So all I'm doing, following where I've put those little bits of colour and just adding some more hairs on top, right, following where I've put down that original section. I'm making sure to leave gaps between each strand of hair to show the fur coming through underneath, which gives the appearance of layers and just makes it look a little bit more three dimensional. For the larger strands of fur, I'm thinking about where it's going to catch the light. And I'm just adding my lighter colours in those places. I'm making sure to vary the direction of my strokes because that variation just makes it a little bit more interesting, makes it look a little bit more alive. If you just do straight lines all going in the same direction, it doesn't really look as realistic as it could do. It's actually quite a good idea at this stage to overlap some of that whiter hair. So you've got some of those colours blended in, that light hair and the orange hair. Trying to think about the form and the structure of this fur and the shape of the tiger as I'm putting in these strands. Just making sure that each stroke I put down helps establish that 3D shape because the most realistic looking paintings are the ones that have the best form, the best colours, the closest to life, tones, shadows and highlights, rather than those with the most detail. Right, if you're trying to get better at painting realistic wildlife, you would be better off focusing on your proportions, focusing on getting accurate 3D shapes, uh, getting your highlights and your shadows right before focusing on the details because the details are the easy bit. The hard bit is developing those forms and I'm still practicing with that. I'm still getting better and learning. So you can see we've got some curly clumped fur here. We've got some longer strands of fur down here where I was painting them. And then over here, and we've got the little strands of fur that's brushed down over the majority of the body. Now these are the ones that tend to be a little bit straighter. So you can get away with making them a little bit straighter when you're painting but not too straight. You still want to have that variation in where those strands are actually going. So you want them to have a tiny little bit of variation in there. So you're making sure to leave plenty of space between each hair. It doesn't matter if some of them overlap. Hey, that actually adds to the effect. But you want to make sure that that fur that you painted underneath is still showing through. And again, you are just following the shape and the direction of that fur that you've already put down. 
Now that's why we do these initial layers so that we've got this guideline and this foundation to work on top of. And you can really get lost into doing all these tiny little furs and once you've already got that guideline, that map there for you to follow. As we move to the top here, what I'm going to show you are some bigger clumps of that straight fur. I always try to work sort of from the back of the fur first, I'd say, or from the end of the fur. I don't really know how to describe it, but I always try to work so I'm adding extra layers of fur on top, like so starting with these and then moving on to the next layer and then going and going and going and going, rather than the other way around. It gives me just a little bit more of a 3D look to it rather than going from this side over here. I can't quite get the form as I want it. Whereas if I work from here, I can choose exactly where I want those strands of fur to overlap. And it almost gives the appearance of a shadowy texture showing through that fur. Especially if we leave little sections where they don't overlap. Don't be afraid to go over your black stripes with some of the fur, it would do naturally. So add some going over those stripes just to mix it up a little bit. It really integrates those black stripes into the rest of the painting. Adds just that little bit extra realism to what you're doing. I think we're starting to get somewhere with this now. Now let's add some hairs near that white section underneath and for this I'm still using the same sort of orangey tinge adding a little bit of blue to that to grey it off and a touch of yellow ochre. Then for this one I will start adding a little bit more white to my mix. I'm just overlaying some of those orange hairs I've already put down, mixing in some of these colours together so that it blends nicely. take shape. Again this isn't the final layer so it will be built up on just as we're doing now building up on the layers underneath. We'll just continue to build up those layers to get it looking as realistic as possible. So I'm making sure to leave plenty of gaps in my first to show the layers underneath. layer of the whiter hair so I just add a little bit more white to my mix and I want this lighter hair to just have a slightly yellower look to it than it does now so I've just added a little bit extra yellow ochre and all I'm now doing is just picking out where I want those really light bits again not covering up all of the paint that I've already put underneath letting some of it show to give that appearance of layering that white starting to take shape now. I just want to add some lighter hairs near the top so I'm using that yellowy mix or that yellowy white mix that I did for the fur on the underside of the tire so this fur here. And I'm just adding a little bit of burnt sienna to it so that nice orangey colour. And I'm going to use this to add a few more lighter hairs up here. <laughs> 
very loosely following where I've put those. Don't worry about the colour too much here because we are going to glaze over it later. Alter these colours a little bit and alter some highlights and shadows. Again, I'm just following the shapes of the fur that I've already put down, using it as a map to help me. Can you see how I'm going over some of those black stripes with my fur? That makes it just look laid a little bit more. It makes it look a little bit less like you've just painted your black stripes on afterwards. And because that always makes the painting look a little bit flat. So just by throwing in some loose little hairs into those black stripes, it makes a massive difference to the painting. It gives those black stripes some form as well. So, for me, now, I tend to do a little bit of over-brightening. So I put a little bit too much white into my paint, and I lose some of that colour. But I do this almost intentionally. So I now want a really, really light layer going over the top. Because next, after that approach, after putting that really, really light layer in, I will glaze the colours back a little bit, add some shadows, add some highlights, and then do the final touch-ups. So what I'm going to do now is just add that final white layer, and then we'll move on to glazing. So for this layer, I'm just picking out some of the smallest, lightest bits of hair. I'm not picking out everything, just a couple of hairs that I want to really stand out. do the same thing in the orange areas of the fur just picking out those areas where I want some finer lighter hairs showing through Do exactly the same thing for the shorter hairs. Just putting in some of these brighter strands. And there we go. Once this step is completed, you just need to let it dry. Obviously with acrylics, this should only take a couple of minutes, but with oils, this may take a few days to dry completely. Because the next step is going to involve washes of color over the top of the paint that we already put down. If you don't let it dry completely, you start to pick up some of that paint that you've already put down and it smudges the painting, which is what we don't want to happen. Okay, so my next job is to start adding a little bit of that colour back into my painting because at the minute it's a little bit white and I want a little bit more of that orangey burnt sienna look going on. So to do this, usually I'd use a flat brush but this one's a little bit big and I'm going to stick to what I said and just use the brushes that I've shown you. So I'm going to use my little round brush here which will work just as well. So for this you want plenty of water okay? and I'm just picking up one colour, just the burnt sienna okay? and you want it as thin as you can possibly get it because the thicker it is the more likely you will cover up what you've already painted whereas if it's thin 
you'll just do a nice thin transparent glaze or thin transparent wash over the top. So plenty of water. Good idea to use clean water at this point, otherwise you'll have some of that muck going onto your piece. So all I'm doing, just washing over, and you can see how it's actually taking away some of that white colour and making it a little bit orange, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so you can see how those colours, how I said it didn't really matter what those colours were, you can see how this little bit of orange over the top really gets rid of those, but still leaving all of that detail underneath. Doesn't matter about being absolutely perfect for this, right, because some of that colour showing through underneath will be a bit of a good thing, and it just adds a little bit more variation to that painting. Next, I might want to mix those colours up a little bit more, add a little bit darker colours in some areas, so I will just mix a little bit of burnt umber with some burnt sienna to create a slightly darker wash. Now, this colour is good, especially in the areas that the black stripes touch the fur. Just having that slightly darker colour really adds to the effect of real fur. So I'm not putting this darker colour everywhere, just in certain places, just to mix up those tones a little bit more. Doesn't matter about losing detail at this point because we are going to go over it again in a little while. But you can see how thinly that goes onto the painting. And I'm not leaving big dark marks everywhere. So we're starting to get a little bit more of that orange into the picture, which is nice. We don't have as many of those white, bright highlights. Sometimes it's nice to put a little bit of this into the whiter bits of fur, just so it ties in the colours together. You could even do this the other way, and you could go a little bit lighter with it. So now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna. I advise staying away from using white at this stage, because white is a very opaque colour, and as we get more opaque, we can't really glaze as well, we can't really change those colours as well because it starts to cover up the details underneath. So a nice, transparent, very thin, watered down wash is all you really need. So now let's add some little bits of yellow to the tiger. Next, I want to add some darker marks to just add some shadows to this fur. So for this I'm just using a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of raw umber and some blue. I want it to be a very very dark brown and not quite the same black as we had before but a very dark brown because this is going to be our shadow. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm glazing but I'm just glazing with the smaller brush. Now that small detailed brush. Good idea to wait for the painting to dry before you start doing this, but I'm just glazing in some strands of shadowy fur just to add a touch more depth to the painting. And it doesn't matter if you put these randomly throughout the fur as well, it all adds to the overall effect. I'm really not being too careful with this step. I'm just putting it down wherever I feel like it should go. And because it's quite transparent paint and I am gonna do another layer on top, it doesn't really matter that much. It's just putting in those little areas of shadow just to give us a little bit more depth. Over here, pay a little bit more attention, looking at where those layers overlap and where we'd expect to see some shadow. Just builds in a little bit of depth to the picture, which is exactly what we're trying to get. That's the whole point of painting fur like this, is so that we can get it looking soft, we can get it looking fluffy, and we can get it looking very depthful, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for, maybe? So now we've done that, 
what we can start to add in are the final little bits of detail. So now I want some darker hairs. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue to my mix, some raw umber and some burnt umber. And I want a bit of an even darker colour, almost black now. Now these are for the smaller darker hairs that are a little bit more refined and showing through. To show that our stripes are actually part of the fur as well and not just painted on top. As you're doing this, you could add some of these strands loose in the fur as well, just to give it that little bit more depth. So we're just now including those black stripes into that fur a little bit. So there's our darker fur in, and then finally we want, or oh, well not finally, there's two more steps. Now we want to just add a few more highlights in. Again, I want to try and keep my highlights sort of in the yellowy area. So I'm now using the raw sienna, some yellow ochre mixed together, and a little bit of white. All I'm doing is picking up a couple of those areas where I've lost a little bit of that detail. Just brushing over for a little bit more, especially where I've just put those darker marks. Then for my final touches, or nearly the final touches, what I do is I get my sword liner and I get some really now pale fur. So get loads of that white in there, mixed with a little bit of the raw sienna and the yellow oak mix that I was just using. And all I use this for are some little loose, longer strands that might be appearing here and there. Because you do see lots of loose little hairs like this in real life, so pop them in in your painting. I add a few more up here because I like the light hitting it, so I just want to get a little bit of brighter fur over here. I should probably be using a small detail brush for this bit, but it works just as well. And then what I do is I let that dry and then once it's dry I'll give it one final glaze over with a little bit of burnt sienna paint. I'll give it just a final little glaze of orange and burnt sienna but you could use any orange it doesn't really matter just over the top just to brighten it up and make it look a little bit more like that tiger fur. And then at this point, you could add a few more darker marks in for the stripes to finish it off, just to make them a little bit more. To really make them pop, what you could do is add a little bit of blue with a little bit of raw umber to make a very bluey grey colour. Add a little bit of white to that, and then we can actually use this to put some detail into the black stripes. Now, not everywhere, just areas where there would be some highlights. So we can just put these in, just floating around, just to give it a little bit of detail. And then for the finishing touches, we can just add a little bit more blue to that mix to make it a little bit more saturated. Add 
a little bit more white to it to make it a bit lighter and just add some touches of lighter dust for near the tops and again following the same process I just adding it randomly but following the direction of that fur and there we go pretty much finished right and that's how I paint my tiger fur um, it looks a little bit better on smooth canvas than paper because the paper's buckled a little bit and this is pretty much it I would use this exact technique all over the tiger we've got short fur similar to the fur on the face curly fur and these longer strands of fur near the bottom and it just goes through my whole process of painting those little bits when i bring this all together for a full tiger it really does look real and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video As always, thank you so much for watching. For more wildlife art tips, head over to studiowildlife.com.